But if you would, turn to the book, the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. Book of Isaiah, chapter 9. And, um, you know, for you that have Bibles there, sometimes a chapter or places in the chapter are titled certain things. And, and, and this one's uh, titled Hope in the Messiah. Hope in the Messiah. And uh, we just got through uh, uh, celebrating Christmas. I don't know about you, but I love celebrating Christmas. I'm glad it's over with. Aren't you glad it's over with t- tonight? Um, I got out, didn't have to buy a whole lot. My wife bought most all the presents, and uh, praise the Lord for that. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I, once I got saved, Christmas used to be the most special time of my life, and it still is today. It still is today. But I was always, always about buying gifts and making sure everybody was taken care of and You know, the more gifts someone had, the better they wore, the better Christmas it was. And then I came to know Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I realized about that gift that each and every one of us got. And so Christmas came more about him than it did about everything else. But uh, it's a new year. It's a new way. And uh, we can call it a new road if we want to. Uh, Another start, as Pastor Gwen said. And so if you're there in chapter 9... Um, the first verse there, we see that there's, uh, uh, there's a lot going on. Matter of fact, it says beyond Jordan and Galilee uh, of the nations there in that first verse. But it talks about dimness, about a calamity uh, there that was, uh, the, the place was in the state of. A little bit like it is around our place. In verse 2, it says, The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Aren't you glad we have Christ, the light of the world, the light that came and shined upon us? It goes on to say, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them the light shine. Thou hast multitude, multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. They, they joy before thee according to the joy and harvest and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful." Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and the peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment, with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of the hosts will perform this. Talks about a peace, a peace that the Lord Jesus Christ brings. I don't know about you, but you'll never have peace that God wants you to have until you have Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And we look about this world of ours today, we look about this land of ours today, and we see that there's not a lot of peace. You pick up the newspaper, you look at your uh, social media, things like that, you find out that there's not a, a, a lot of peace in this world today. When we come to church and we have that peace here, and what's so wonderful to come to church and and to know that peace. And how many of us in our time have said, boy, I wish I, wish I could just uh, uh, have that time back. Anybody said that before? I can remember it used to be a, a saying of, of my grandparents. They'd say, I wish, I wish I just had this time back. I wish I could go back uh, this far back in time. And with most of us, there's times in our lives when uh, when things have come in, when uh, we've allowed sin to come in our lives or tragedy has come into our lives and things like that, and we wish that we could go back in time and we could change that. But the Lord orchestrates everything that goes on in our lives. And I thought about that as my grandfather one day was carrying on. I can remember this almost as plain as day. He was talking about how, well, if we could just go back in time, and I thought to myself, go back in time, man, we just got air conditioning. What are you talking about? Let's go back in time. Who wants to go back in time to air conditioner? How many of us would have, uh, how many of you ladies would like to be washing clothes with one of those washboards and wringing them out and doing it all by hand? Or how many of us last Sunday when it was, when it was freezing cold would have liked to have gone out and hooked up the horses to the carriage so we could have come to church? It was nice to go in there and, 
and, and, and be able to crank our car and get that heat going. And, and, and for some of you that, that, that have plenty of money, sit in those seats that are heated. Don't, don't you like that? I rode in a car the other day that had a heated steering wheel in it, a heated steering wheel. I don't know how much that car cost, but just sitting in the seats, I knew that I couldn't afford it. But we have a God in heaven that loved us so much that he gave the son of glory, gave his son. As a matter of fact, he formed himself into his son that he gave us the peace, all the peace that we need to get through life. He gave us that opportunity to where we could start on a new road today. And we could have a year of peace. And if we want to have the year of peace that we are looking forward to having, no matter what happens in our life, we can only do it. We can only do it if we stay in the light of our precious Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight I'd like to talk a little bit about the light of the world, our need for the light of the world in our lives. And I'm not just talking about for salvation, but not only does he give us the light of the world, not only do we accept the light of the world, not only do we have the light of the world within us, but how important it is to make a decision this year to be the disbursement of the light of the world, that light that we have that will get us through whatever happens, will give us that year of peace no matter whatever comes up. May we bow our heads tonight and ask the Lord to meet with us. Father, once again today, we're at your house. And Lord, we treat this day special. Father, there's not a special day really. You want all of us all of the time. Father, you want our worship, you want our praise. You want our lives. You want us to be the light of the world, to carry, to carry you to every corner that we go, every place that we go. Father, you want to use us. And Lord, I know this without a doubt in my mind, that you want, it was your desire for the whole world to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Father, we come into a world that uh, is in darkness. And so Father, tonight, may we be responsive to the to you the light father may we be sold out to you in this year and lord may it be a year that we stay so focused on you so close to you so tight in our relationship with you lord jesus that no matter what this year brings in our lives that we'll be able to go through it with that peace that passes all understanding that peace that you give O oh lord jesus and father tonight i just pray that you would use your word to Strengthen us, Lord God, to, uh, Father, to, to, to let us see exactly what you have planned for us and be in that light that you've called us to be. And most importantly, Lord Jesus, for someone that's here tonight that's still in darkness and has not received the light, not taken on to that that you gave us through your death, O oh Lord Jesus, and your resurrection. Father, just help us now as we meet. Help my voice, Lord, to carry only the words that you have for us tonight. We ask these things in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. There in Luke chapter 1 and verse 78, Zechariah pro proclaims this right here. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. The Lord Jesus Christ is the uncomprehensible peace that each and every one of us need tonight that will carry us through no matter what we're going through. I looked up that word, you know, it, that, that, that light that he gives, it, it, gives it, it, it takes and it just strips that, that once we accept, accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, it just shreds that bell of darkness that was around us and, and gives us the ability to, uh, to, to get away from the results that we had for the sin that came in this world through Adam and the sin that we had in our lives. Pastor Green and I were talking a little bit about this and I looked up that, that word and it means not capable of being contained within limits. Man, the Lord Jesus Christ is not containable. The Lord God of heaven is not containable. He has got every inch, every uh, 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 millimeter, everything is covered by the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and another part of that word right there, it says not capable of being, co being comprehended or understood. The reach of human intellect, unconceivable. 
You know, there's things about this book right here I don't understand. Pastor Gwen and I were talking about this this week. There's some things here I just don't quite understand. I, I go back, and as we were talking the other day, I, we were sitting there, and we were talking about the Trinity. I'm going to tell you something. There's days in my life that I, I, I believe the Trinity without a doubt in my mind. I believe that God was the Son. I believe the Son was God. I believe the Holy Spirit is the three in one. And I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit lives within each and every one of us. But sometimes as I look up to heaven, sometimes as I talk to the Lord Jesus Christ, I scratch my head and I said, well, I just really don't understand it, but I believe it. I believe it. And there's things in here that that, that, that are sometimes hard for us maybe to understand. But there's one thing that I do know that He is the light that each and every one of us need. I know that He is the light. If we're going to have the year that each and every one of us want to have this year, we've got to walk within the light. We've got to walk with the light. Uh, we've got to be walking hand in hand with the light with the Lord Jesus Christ if we want this to be the year that we want it to be. How many of us want to go through problems this year? I don't believe anybody's going to raise their hand. How, how many people don't want peace in our life this year? I don't believe anybody's going to raise their hand. But I'm going to tell you something. If we're going to have the peace, no matter what comes in our life, we've got to walk with the light. We've got to have that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The need for the light is seen in the fact that the world lies in total darkness. One writer this week as I was studying put this and pinned this in word. The world lies in darkness and inhabitants are without light. Look around us. Look at our world. Look at what's going on. Uh, look at the babies being killed. Look at, uh, look at all the trash that's going on in our world today. It, it is a world of darkness. It, we, we talk about, the pastor was talking about no, and talking about the earth being destroyed. I don't even know whether the earth, to me it doesn't seem like the earth was as, was as wicked back then as it is today. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand how come the Lord Jesus Christ hasn't come back. We, we keep saying He's coming any time, He's coming any time. I have no idea when He's coming, but I know this. Are we truly, really ready for Him to come back? Examine ourselves today. Buddy Morrow, examine yourself. Are you really, truly ready for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back this moment? Think about yourself. Think about yourself. If you were to die right now tonight, would you be ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ face to face? Or would there be some things in your life that you may change around? Darkness is the absence of light. Just the total absence of light. The opposite of light. Darkness is defined as gloomy, as hopeless, as dismal, sinister, evil, angry, secret, mysterious, night, ignorant. Do we see a world that's like that today? Do we, do, do we see a nation that's like that today? Do we see a, 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 a city that's like that today? Well, I'll tell you what, if we really believe that, we need to really be serious about where the world lies in the darkness and death that is there because the world has rebelled against the Lord Jesus Christ. The world has rebelled against God himself. From the fall of Adam onward, the whole world has existed in a spiritual darkness until we find Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. The writer there in Romans chapter 1 and verse 20 says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of this world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his internal power in Godhead, so that, are, and so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were, was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Talks about right there, the spiritual darkness is universal. The writer there, 1 John, John said in chapter 5 also, verse 18, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth. In wickedness. I like what James Buchanan wrote in 1804, I believe it was. 
in his book, Enlightening the Mind. I know it was in the early 1800s. He says, spiritual darkness is spoken of in Scripture, not as a mere passive or negative thing, but as a positive power. The power of darkness is expressly mentioned. And the Isabel angels are represented as kept in chains of darkness, as if it imposed fetters on the soul. Listen to that. And it goes on, it says, Truly, none can break those fetters, but he who calls the iron chain to fall from off the hands and the feet of his imprisoned disciples. The only way that we'll ever gather that peace, the only way that we'll ever become that light that the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to become is when we allow him to take the chains off of us. And a lot of times because we walk in the darkness, of, uh, we walk in darkness, we have those chains that, 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 that keep us down, those, those chains that keep us from being the witnesses that we need to be. You know, the world is in darkness and there's this fish called the Mexican, I'm trying to remember the name, of Mexican cave fish. And, and I understand there's some in Tennessee as I was studying this out a little bit, but, but they've lived in darkness so long. They're down in deep caves. They've not seen the, a, a bit of the light. And they've lived there so long that they're totally blind. Matter of fact, their eyes have migrated and they no longer have eyes. We have a world that is living in darkness right now. And I hate to say it, but there's so many in the church that our lives are so tied to the darkness that people don't see us having the light of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. Yeah. And, and that's what we're to be. We're to be the light for the Lord Jesus Christ. But people are blind sometimes because of the way we as Christians are walking our life. We're living in the darkness of these caves. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this tonight. There's no cave. You've heard me say this before. There's no place dark enough that we can hide from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you know Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, He not only expects you to be a light, He commanded us to be a light. They've suffered permanent loss of the ability to see. I look across this nation and I see people that I believe have lost the total ability to see the kingdom of God. To see what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. So it is with man in his natural state he has lost the ability to see. The psalmist said there in chapter 82 and verse 5 they know not Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. We have a group of people that walk in darkness. They talk about knowing Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. They continue to walk in darkness. The source of the light is God, as each and every one of us knows that. We know that God came down to earth in the form of a baby, laid in a manger, hung on a cross, Raised up from the dead so that we could live again, so the light would come in. But, and he is the one that sent the light into the darkness. He's the one, the Lord God of heaven, sent his only begotten son. The, the, the Lord God of heaven sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary. To be the light of the world, that we no longer have to live in that darkness. The prophet Isaiah said in chapter 60 and verse 1, Arise, shine, for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For they behold the darkness shall cover the earth and the gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Read that. Read that. And it says there, and it shall rise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Is the world seeing the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ upon each and every one of us that call ourselves Christians tonight? And it says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of the rising. People are going to come to know Christ because of the way that we live our life. Or it could be that people will never come to know Christ. They'll stay in the darkness because they see the darkness of our life, the sin of our life, instead of us being the light that God's called us to be. Christ is the complete opposite of darkness. It's impossible to combine light and darkness. You ever thought about that? Just no way to combine it. If we were to totally darken this room, black out this room tonight. I could take a little match, and I started to do this with a, 
I started to bring my flashlight, but my truck is broke down and it was all in there, my bright flashlight, and a little match and light it up and show you how just a little bit of light reflects a lot. How it breaks the darkness. One time I was out hunting on the river and we went down in what's called a P-Row in, in, in Louisiana. It's a, it, 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 I call it a little John boat. But we went out in what's called the Honey Island Swamp. And I don't know, you know, some of y'all hear Bigfoot and all. There's a Honey Island Swamp monster or several of them out there. I don't know. But it is a spooky place out there. It really is. And, and so we went out and, and, and we figured we'd be back about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And hunting was good. We were killing a lot of ducks. And we got carried away. So we start coming back in. And, and we did not carry a light with us whatsoever. And all of a sudden it clouds up. And it gets dark. The sun goes down. The clouds come in. And when I say this to you, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. You really couldn't. That's an eerie feeling, especially when you're on the water. So we finally got over and got off side. And, and man, we looked for this little place where we kept our, where we put in at and all that. Couldn't ever find it. Couldn't ever find it and everything. Went over and got us a, a, a fire going. And, and, and here we are. We're trying to get warm and all that kind of stuff. And the fire got going big. And so, so we're walking out there with a, piece of wood looking for some more firewood to, we figured we we're going to have to stay warm all night long and look over there man we wasn't but about 150 yards from the boat dock and, and from my truck and everything it was so dark we couldn't see anything and we've got to be very careful with our lives because we've got a world out there that needs to see the light of the Lord Jesus Christ and if we don't live that way sometimes all they can see is the darkness in our lives. Sometimes they'll never see the light because of the way that we live our lives. Isaiah, again, in chapter 9 and verse 2 says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. The light shined. Most each and every one of us, and I believe probably every one of us that are sitting here tonight, have heard the gospel of salvation, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's so people that they know a lot about Jesus. They know how to spell Jesus. You've heard me say this time and time again, but they truly don't know Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Yeah. That are sitting in the house of God in our church and other churches tonight in the morning time and many churches around. You're looking at a guy that sat in church. You know my testimony and I thought about that Sunday morning that I was sitting in church and I thought about that time that the Holy Spirit of God spoke to me, but I, I wouldn't let go of the back of that pew and, and I stayed there in, my, in the darkness. I stayed there because of my own desire not to give in to the calling of the Holy Spirit of God. I, I can't tell you the reason for that. Maybe it was I was just not ready to give up on some of that sin in my life. I don't know what it was, but I know one thing. I wasn't walking down and talking to that pastor down there standing in front. No way. I don't understand. See, I heard the gospel over and over again many times. I, I knew how to spell Jesus. You've heard me tell the testimony of me teaching a, a vacation Bible school uh, class when I was a lost individual and a, and, and a little girl getting saved who became a Southern Baptist missionary. See, it has nothing to do with the person. It has to do with the Word of God. It has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. But how come, Buddy Mark, you wouldn't give in? How come you wouldn't accept Christ for the light that He was, for the Savior that He was? I can't explain that to you. But for years and years and years, I would tell people that I knew Jesus. And can I say this to everybody out there? I knew Jesus. I knew Jesus. I knew Jesus came into this earth as a babe, born of a virgin. I knew Jesus that, that, that I knew that he was beaten. I, I knew that he was hung on a cross. I knew that he died for the sins of the world. I knew that on the third day that he rose again. I, I knew that he walked. I knew that he taught the disciples. I knew that he taught, uh, that, that he taught and he, he brought up Judas who ended up betraying him. I, I knew all this about the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? But I didn't know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. 
and continue to walk in that darkness. And finally, the Holy Spirit of God got so strong in my life and a drawing. I finally surrendered to him for real. Oh, have I ever walked in darkness again? Sometimes when somebody has visually watched me. Sometimes in my life I haven't done the right thing and I, 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 I'm just so happy that the Lord Jesus Christ has never let go of me because there's been times when I've let go of him. Oh, have I lived even a close to a, maybe not even half a perfect life? There's been times when I've allowed that darkness to be seen by others in my life. Will there be one day where I'll be accountable to the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm not sure. Uh, when I stand before him, he says, boy, do you remember when you were acting like that or when you did this and, and that person over there never accepted me because they watched the way you carried your light, the way that you were the candle of the world? I don't know. I hope not. But I know that there's been times when my life hasn't been the life, the light, that the Lord wanted it to be. The light of this world, Jesus Christ, expels the darkness. It is what we decide to do with Christ, the light. There John again, he said, This then, the message which we have heard of him, declared to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all will never match the Lord Jesus Christ, but he tells us to do our best to walk after him. He's given us an outline of how we're supposed to live our life. We're supposed to be the light. But tonight, if you're sitting here, you'll either choose one of three things. Maybe tonight you need to choose to accept Christ. Maybe there's never been that time in your life when, oh, you, you've been like me, like a lot of people sat here. Knew how to spell Jesus. Knew everything Jesus did. But never accepted him for what he did for you. We decide tonight whether to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We decide tonight to love others as Christ loved us. Living in darkness can lead to regrettable consequences. John wrote in the Apostle of John chapter 8 verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them saying... I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I thought about this. I read a story a few weeks, I don't know, maybe a few months ago. I know some of you are older than I am. I never did think that I would live, and I'm not joking when I say this. I don't think my parents ever thought I would live as old as I am today. But uh, the Lord has seen fit to do that for some reason. Um, so sometimes time gets away from me. But I read about an old farmer. You know, I'm a country boy, and I love horses and animals and things like that, and I read some of those old country books and written by cowboys and things like that, and he said that there was, uh, before electricity was around, he grew up when, uh, sort of like Pastor Gwen. He must have been about Pastor Gwen's age because he talked about you know, he talked about the first time he ever saw a telephone pole dropped off by his house, and I forget what year that was. But he said, man, he said, he, he said they were excited for the six or eight months that it took them to get electricity. So, so it was like, it was like something happened the day they dropped that, that, te- that electrical pole out there in front of their house. He said, man, he said, you thought we had Christmas all over again. We were so excited. But before there was electricity, he had a guy that was working for, for, his, for him, and, and, and he said this right here. He said, uh, Man, you know, you carry this light everywhere you go. You go over and you court your girlfriend. You got to carry this light and watch where you're going, all that. He said, man, when I, when I was your age, he said, I just go all through the woods and all that kind of stuff. I didn't need any light. He said, yeah, but look what you got when you was courting your girlfriend. You know, I wonder sometimes what we get because we live in darkness. We're not being the light that God wants us to be. We're to be the ones carrying the light of the world. He lives within us. He commanded us to carry that. 
And I thought about what we get sometimes because we don't carry the light. Some people, I hate to say it, they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. They really do. And when you reject the Lord Jesus Christ and the drawing of the Holy Spirit on your life, you'll find that there's a place that's real called hell. I'd read probably about six months ago, and I can't remember the number of people that even are in church today that don't believe hell's a real place. Isn't that amazing? As much as you read about it in the Bible, and people don't believe it's a real place. But hell's real. There'll be a gnashing of teeth. There'll be a fire that never ends for those that reject the light of this world, the Lord Jesus Christ. But we will decide how we will walk this next year. And the Bible teaches us that if you know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that we are to be light bearers. There in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 15, it says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Many of us could quote this verse tonight right here, because it goes on, it says, And it giveth off light unto all that are in the house. It says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. I like what Robert Aldine said. He said, There's not enough darkness in this world to put out the light of even one small candle. How bright are our candles tonight? How bright are they burning? We're to be the ones carrying that light of the world. I thought about this. The Word of God calls us soldiers, doesn't it? We sing that song that we're marching in the Lord's army. We sing that song that we're carrying the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're soldiers of God. And I thought about this right here. If we truly are soldiers as God's commanded us, how are we doing as soldiers tonight? How are we doing? Would we end up in a court martial some, somewhere for derelict of our duty of being the soldier that God wants us to be or would it be as Matthew said there Lord Jesus Christ look at us and say well done thou good and faithful servant you know I told you all that story about me being out in the woods but I remember reading a story a few years ago and it was, a, it was by a pastor. It was actually a message that he put out. I don't even remember the name of the message or the pastor's name. But he said that he and his daughter were coming in from college, coming back home for the Christmas holidays. It was this time of year. And so they came around a corner, and I used to live in a little place called Silver Hill, Alabama. And we had a caution light. And it, 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 it like went from 60 to 55 to 45 to 30 miles an hour from about here to the door out there. And they had one police officer that sat, up, that sat out there would write tickets for not getting slow enough in time. They had two police officers that worked that area. And so when one of them was off and the other one was sleeping, we didn't have any police officers in our area. And that's the truth. There wasn't a street light that went through there. So when the caution light wasn't flashing up there, it was like you're going through the middle of nowhere, nothing. But he said that his daughter and her friend were coming, and they came around this curve, and because of a power outage, it was just the eeriest feeling in the world because there was a power outage, and there wasn't a light on in that little community. And just sort of creepy and scary to them. And as they came around and they got on that other curve over there, all of a sudden they see a light, a beam of light down there. 
Oh, about maybe a half a mile or so down the road, maybe a mile. As they came up upon it, it was a church. And the light on the steeple up there that glowed on the steeple, they could see that light. And they literally could see that thing from a long, long way off. It's amazing how the Lord Jesus Christ wants to use us to be that bright and brimming light. This should be us in the next year. When I say this to you, not the church, but us individually. If we want our church to be the beaming beacon that we call our church, Beacon Baptist Church, the family-friendly church, if we want to be that beam of light as a church, it's all got to begin with us being a beaming light for the Lord Jesus Christ, a bright light, be an inviting light. Those girls, when I read that, they told their father that, that or told her father that that light just seemed, seemed to be inviting to them to go from such an eerie darkness. People need to see the light in this because this world is living in darkness right now. We're going to cross paths with people tomorrow and this week that started a new year in life. And many of us will start out on new steps. This is going to be a changing year for me, I can see already. A lot of new things coming. I don't even know what to expect in this year. But I want to be the light that the Lord Jesus Christ wants me to be. And the only way that I can be the light that he wants me to be, the only way that you can be the light that he wants you to be, is if we walk hand in hand with the light. And let his light beam through us oh this year may bring things that aren't peaceful when I look at them from last year but if I walk in the light if I walk with the Lord Jesus Christ that peace that passes all understanding will get us through it Christian how well how bright is your candle burning tonight it's a huge challenge that we should take and we should take it seriously about how we live. We need to ask ourselves tonight, am I the light in anyone else's life? In my life, <clears throat> excuse me, in my life, is it? Are my words guiding people out of the darkness in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ? Dave Brandon wrote this right here. It's a dark. It's dark in the world, and we have the light. Are we lighting the way? I like what I heard in a sermon just the other day. A pastor said that he was preaching, and he asked the congregation what a saint was. He said one of the little boys sat back there in the back, looked up, and said he looked at a picture of the apostles there, a stained glass window of the apostles there in the church right, and, and said, it's people who let the light shine through. Are we allowing the light of the Lord Jesus Christ to shine, shine through us today? We will, each and every one of us, decide what we do in 2023. And right now, today's a good day to start it off, the first day of the year. So let your light so shine. I bright your light tonight. And maybe you're still sitting there and you're in darkness and you're lost and you've never taken on the light that gave his life on the cross of Calvary for you. Maybe today is the day that you take the best gift that you could have ever been given at Christmas time and start the new year off knowing that you have an eternal home in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed.